Hello fellow Spare Parts Army, I'm your host Chris Cappy, and before we get into the Army's 6.8mm next generation squad weapon, I'll need everyone to take a quick knee and rally on me. Our partner, Covered 6 Security Academy, is a group of experienced trainers from the military and law enforcement communities. And they're looking for veterans that are interested in a career in cybersecurity or physical security. Covered 6 Security Academy offers five week training courses either on site or remote that'll get you ready for your new career. Just like how boot camp turned me from a scrawny fist bumping Long Island kid with no job prospects into a scrawny fist bumping Long Island kid with a career they love. Don't worry though, I've cut back on the fist bumping. So at the end of the course, they will even help to place you into your new career as a protector within their network. Click the link in the description to check out Covered 6 Security Academy and learn more. All right, on your feet, let's learn about this new gear. Big Army is currently developing a 6.8mm prototype rifle to replace the current standard issue 5.56 M16. The military is also working on creating a next generation squad weapon fire control system. This scope will change the future of warfare just as much, if not more, than the 6.8 rifle and ammo switch. The new optic has a integrated laser range finder, wind sensor, temperature gauge, elevation sensor, and ballistic computer all rolled into one. It's almost as powerful as my old TI-8053 calculator. What it does do is calculate every shot before you even pull the trigger. Finally, every infantryman will have a targeting system as good as the one used by Robocop. So for the past few decades, everyone has been waiting around, just hoping for some kind of massive leap forward to miraculously happen in firearms. Something like we saw when we went from the bolt action rifles to semi-automatic rifles. And while everyone was looking around for that miracle to happen, they missed the fact that the technological leap forward has already taken place, but in the form of the next generation fire control system. These new optics are going to make weapons exponentially more effective on the battlefield. I'd rather have a musket from 1850 with this next generation fire control system than a modern weapon without one. Okay, I might be exaggerating, but you get what I'm saying. It promises to increase how often you hit the target and the speed at which you're able to acquire targets. It's like using cheat codes. You'll have the enemy yelling at you, calling you a hacker. Vortex Optics, along with Leopold and L3 Harris, announced in April that they won the bid to create 115 prototypes each for the next generation squad weapon fire control system. You're probably wondering, what's so next generation here? Sam Hamilton from Vortex had more to say about the optic, quote, by combining a unity power one to eight times direct view optic utilizing a first focal plane etched reticle, a one kilometer capable laser rangefinder, and state of the art onboard ballistic engine, atmospheric sensor suite, and programmable active matrix micro display overlaid onto the first focal plane, Active Reticle delivers a true multi-mission fire control, enabling everything from close quarters battle to designated marksmanship at the extent of the NGSW's effective range." End quote. Okay, let's pick this statement apart and try to make English out of all the military-type corporate buzzword speak. I've got about 10 Google searches ahead of me before I can understand any of that. This is a crazy way of saying that you can program the type of reticle you want to display, and the reticle is displayed digitally while it takes into account all of that sensor data. So the reticle is going to move on your site picture depending on the humidity, the wind, the elevation. It's going to take all of that into account and then move that digitally displayed reticle to where it needs to be for the distance of the target you're trying to hit. That's crazy. It's my opinion that when we look into the future, we're gonna worry more about the capabilities of our enemy's scopes and sensors that are on top of the weapon and less about the kind of weapon that they carry and less about the type of round that they shoot. Here's a line from the chief technical officer from Vortex, Sam Hamilton, who said, quote, when we learned of the soldiers need for increased lethality out of their squad weapons, Combined with the small arms ammunition configuration study, which proved that advancements in electro-optical fire control had the greatest potential to increase soldiers' lethality, we knew there was an important capability gap we could fill." End quote. Part of the reason I'm excited about this is the conversation I had with Lieutenant Colonel Bohannon, the product manager for the 6.8mm Next Generation Squad Weapon Program. He mentioned how impressed he was with this optic and just how much of an edge he anticipated it would give soldiers. 
especially once it had been combined with the weapons platform. In my interview with him, Lieutenant Colonel Bohannon mentioned how they have plans for seamlessly integrating these optics with the ones already on the soldier's helmet. So for instance, the soldier can look around corners by looking into their enhanced goggles, allowing them to see from the point of view of the weapon's optic. All these sensors talking to each other will be the future of warfare. Don't forget to fire around at the like button. Each candidate has a very different and unique optic. We can speculate about the performance of these different optics. Personally, I like the aesthetic of the Vortex because it appears to have a lower profile than the L3 Harris. I haven't been able to find any images of the Leopold optic online. I'm assuming they're all behind a paywall on Leopold's OnlyFans account. The principles of how firearms work have remained unchanged since the days of John Browning when they created recoil-operated rifles. Instead, what will really bring us into the future is augmenting our abilities with high-tech optics. You constantly hear how the army is switching from the M16 to the 6.8 because they want to be able to defeat the new level for body armor that near-peer adversaries use. That might be partially true, but I think what the army really wants to do here is choose a round that can fly farther and more accurately than the 5.56 because this optic makes long-range engagements easier for your average soldier. The army's dream has been to have a rifleman in your average infantry unit who is able to be four rolls at once. They want a foot soldier who is able to be a sniper, thanks to this optic, and then they can also be a close quarters door kicker at the same time. So basically this scope can be adjusted from one to eight times magnification, depending on the distance at which you're trying to engage a target. The old laser rangefinder didn't send any sensor data to the rest of the optic. With the rangefinder sensor integrated with the rifle, you can now start to see the benefits of sensors talking to each other. For instance, if the optic knows you just sighted a target at 650 meters, it can now automatically adjust the reticle displayed for that targeted distance. So, what does that mean? It means you don't need to use those approximate drop-down markers that are usually on your old school traditional scopes. This optic takes all that guesswork and how far away the target is, how much wind there is, and how much compensation you need to account for. This takes all the human error out of the equation. Coincidentally, human error was my nickname in my squad in Iraq. I know a lot of people are hesitant to trust something that's electric. They say it'll get knocked out by electromagnetic bomb or they worry that the batteries are gonna run out, but these have a bunch of fail-safe redundancies built into these optics. There's another interesting futuristic technology that might possibly be added to the optic. It could have a face recognition technology. When the soldier looks down the sight, it will only fire if it has a positive identification for the soldier who was assigned that weapon. If your iPhone has the ability, why not your weapon too, right? There could potentially be problems here though, right? Like if someone else from your platoon needs your weapon, will everyone in your platoon be authorized to use each other's weapons? Will that be at battalion level? I mean, is the main purpose for this ability to prevent the enemy from using the weapon against you? I have a lot of questions about the value of this. Even more importantly, if it fails to recognize your face three times in a row, does it shut down and stop working like my iPhone? If it doesn't recognize my face, will it delete all my bullets? Hamilton from Vortex says this, quote, end users will no longer need to leave their field of view to consult separate range finders or ballistic calculators, slowing them down and compromising their situational awareness, end quote. The Army has two production awards for the fire control system that are for 250 million in 2021. Once that happens, 200 next generation fire control systems for the 6.8 will be produced every month. Straight from the press release from L3 Harris, they said, quote, the NGSW FC provides an integrated approach to targeting by combining range finding capability, ballistic computation, and environmental sensors that increase the probability of accurate targeting while decreasing the time to engage a threat. The NGSWFC will support many of the current and future weapons platforms used by the Army." End quote. Before we jump into how we got to this new fire control system, we have a message from this video's partner, Covered 6 Security Academy. They are post 9-11 GI Bill eligible, so you can use your military benefits to cover the whole course. They even have distance learning options in cybersecurity and physical security. Click the link in the description below to start your next chapter in a career field doing what you love. I know this is a perfect fit for a lot of you out there, and when you take the course, let me know how you liked it. I'm looking to branch out from making videos myself. But first, let me tell you about how optics got to where they are today. This will help you appreciate how insanely powerful this is. 
the average infantryman in the 1990s had no scope on their rifle at all. Think about that for a second. Modern infantry today in 2020 are all equipped with some kind of optic. If you don't have something attached to the top of your rifle, you're probably the S3 battalion clerk, and God bless you because the rippets don't get to the front lines without you. In the matter of just a few decades, we've gone from needing to use iron sights to ballistic computer sensor optics. One thing is for sure, no matter what weapon the United States Infantry wields, it will be the fire control system that makes the greatest difference on the battlefield. Subscribe to be my battle buddy, even if you hate that term, you warrior. I'm your host, Chris Cappy, Task and Purpose out.